development, uh, the learning outcomes that uh, sorry, the learning outcomes that you all will have is to understand the principles of professional development. So for us, because you have not been there for like three or four weeks, I'm just assuming that you can uh, extract some things that you have missed. So basically, we have learned about what is professional development. Uh, ways we can overcome certain barriers when it comes to professional development. Uh, and then we have also discussed about different sources that is available for the professional development. Uh, and today we will go through about how you analyze factors to consider when selecting opportunities. And then when you are setting certain SMART goals, uh, how we are going to uh, have an agenda when you create a SMART goal. Right? So the first slide, I will just recap again. Hold on. Uh, what is meant by professional development in health and social care? It is basically how you improve your knowledge, your skills, your competence uh, throughout your professional life. Uh, so basically, uh, like I said yesterday, uh, I was mentioning that regardless of what age you are, what background, education background you have, it should not stop you from going further in whatever the thing that you have interest or passion in. You need to continue to uh, aspire and you need to continue to go on so that you will know that there is always more opportunities going to open up. So it is very important that you improve your knowledge, your skills and competence. Uh, and also when it comes to health and social care, you can't say just because you are a doctor or a nurse, OK, I'm a doctor, I'm a nurse. So my uh, studies and my education ends here. No. Because even for a doctor, they will always have many cases coming where they need to sort of think. So today it might be a, a case about a 35 year old a man about maybe liver failure. Next day he could have a case where he's finding a woman with a breast cancer. So even doctors and nurses, they can't really limit themselves saying, OK, I'm finally a doctor. I'm finally a researcher. My education stops now. I don't want to go any further. No, you need to know that you have to upgrade your skills, your knowledge, your competence, because learning never stops. Every day there is something for you to learn. And like I always say, just one topic only, there is so much information and there is so much things to read and understand. So uh, a professional will always have the mentality or the mindset to always keep on learning and to enhance their knowledge more and more and more, right? And in addition, uh, the professional development with the health and social care sector will ensure of quality care. So in summary, if they ask you, why do you need to have professional development in health and health sector? It is because you want to make sure that there is efficiency in your workplace, that you can give the best of health care to your patients. And if it's, a, if it's a corporate sector, you can make sure that there is going to be good uh, profit, right? So whatever the organization that you are working, if you have professional development, then you will have many benefits that you can reap. OK, so uh, if I just again summarize why professional development is important in health and social care, uh, in short, you can say that you need to continually upskill. Upskill meaning, let's say like, let's say Taranga is a good uh, entrepreneur. Uh, when it comes to running a daycare center. But if Taranga limits herself, okay, I have my own business, I don't need to do anything. Maybe in the future she could have other competitors who run better daycare. So Taranga should understand, okay, what are the other fun, interesting activities that I can introduce to my students? The ones that was not last year, but new activities that I could do this year. So she could Google about it, she could go on YouTube about it. That is that should be her determination and enthusiasm to upskill her level so that people are not going to go and talk about oh Tharanga's daycare last year that they had different activity. This year she has thought of different activities like that. People also would start like, you know, recommend and suggest that, OK, this is much better, but that daycare center is not. The, it's the same thing. Children don't get much. They just eat and sleep, but no activities, nothing. The child is learning like that. Uh, people can discuss. So that is why you need to upskill. Whatever the skill you have, you need to upgrade it. OK. Uh, and also uh, always like that's one thing about professional development is why they say that a professional should dress well, because it, it doesn't matter what skin color you are. Maybe you are dark in complexion. Maybe 
whatever the diff- uh, thing that you have, it should not limit yourself to dress cleanly, smartly, and hygienically. That is also professional development. You can't go to a board meeting conference and present in your nightgown. Is it professional? No, it's not professional because nightgown or your pajamas is something that you you will wear at your home before you sleep. So of course we all have different costumes that we wear as for the different occasion. So that is also a professional development because the moment you dress professionally, you gain confidence, and when you gain confidence, you deliver better. And when you deliver better, people will understand. Okay, this person really knows about the subject that he or she is talking, and you know, then what happens is, you know, they can see that this person is doing a great job. They know how to behave professionally with people, right? So you you can see uh, that one cycle when it goes very well, that entire cycle becomes good. And like yesterday, we were talking about. Uh, economical crisis in Sri Lanka. So we learned that the tumor or the cancer-causing tumor in the economical crisis of Sri Lanka is the government. So yesterday was a very interesting discussion we had. Like Taranga suggested about solar powers, and Janaka was saying solar powers, and Taranga was giving us like, no, it is also not going to work. She shared her own personal experience why solar power is not going to work for the power cuts. Uh, because uh, ultimately, whatever the suggestions that we are going to give, it has to pass through the government. And right now, sadly, the Sri Lankan government is extremely corrupted. That we only see things getting worse day by day, and nothing getting better. So the reason of that makes the whole cycle to go uh, in a bad way, where children's education is affected, healthcare sector is affected. Uh, the youth are affected without jobs or the job they get, they don't have enough pay or the income they get, they cannot sustain for a week, right? So we understood yesterday that because of the prof- lack of professional development in our, uh, what do you call, governmental sector, it has caused a lot of repercussion, a lot of damage to the entire cycle of Sri Lanka, right? So that is why uh, we need to understand why this professional development is so important because it can cause issues for us life and death issues right because uh, even though like i know that money is not everything i know money is not about always happiness but whether we like it or not when the financial grounds become weak in a family many problems starts to come right whether we like it or not like it or not this is the reality this is the truth right especially in sri lanka today we are feeling this more because everything revolves around the economy. So when children don't have food, parents get frustrated. When parents get frustrated, husband and wife, they start to argue, a lot of divorces, Uh, then there are a lot of broken families, children don't get mental support, physical support, emotional support, children want to commit suicide. So that is why we discussed yesterday, there is gonna be a very dark time that we are heading in Sri Lanka simply because of this lack of professional development. And I was mentioning yesterday, professional development is also about not how you dress, not how you talk, not how you write. It's also about your basic values and ethics, the uh, the, the right thing to do. You being honest with somebody's money, you being honest in your work, like you don't cheat. If there is an inflow of money for the company, then that is the maintenance for the company. You cannot take that money to your pocket for your personal benefits. But those are all professional development, your integrity, your honesty, you know, your truthfulness, what you speak, how you behave, how you conduct. So all those qualities lacked in our governmental sector, starting from our president right down to all the cabinet, right? So that as a result, the whole corruption started and there was a tumor, we, on, we never knew that they are robbing so much money and so much public money was used for their benefits that we never saw that we are going to this sort of direction. So, but if they were professionally developed, they would have done the right thing for the country in the right way that the people wouldn't have never su- uh, suffered, right? So that is why I said professional development is a very broad topic that just doesn't uh, confine uh, only to healthcare sector, it confines to every aspect in your life, in your own personal life, in your own company, in whatever job you are working. Even as a student, she has certain professional ways to talk to a teacher, uh, talk to her parents, right? 
uh, it's okay that you make a mistake, but as long as you don't make that mistake again, right? That's the most important thing. Then also we discussed about the three C's about competence, uh, compatibility, and also capacity, right? So competent, like I said yesterday, was like uh, they have a lot of good knowledge about a subject. They're competent. So you don't need to follow this person like behind every time telling them do this, do that. They can already do their job independently, right? And uh, capacity, like I said, was if you take like two students, one student can do mathematics for maybe one hour, but the other student has the capacity to do mathematics for around three hours at a stretch. So everybody has a capacity. Like, for example, uh, for me, if I if I take an example for me, uh, like when I feel like I'm like overly pressurized on something or overly expected to do something uh, beyond my limitation, my capacity sometimes like I get like very disturbed because I am someone I get very disturbed when uh, I am uh, pressurized unreasonably. I can understand deadlines are there, but sometimes people tend to get advantage. They tend to make you overwork. And in that sense, my capacity would like break and I can lose my temper. I was telling this yesterday also. So that is my capacity. I tend to lose my temper when people overly pressurize me and overly take advantage of me. My capacity can uh, of that threshold breaks and I can I can react. Uh, I can really lose my temper. But there are other people, uh, they know that they are being taken advantage. They know that they are being overused, but their way of reaction is they are calm uh, or they are uh, they actually hold on and with and they silently exit the company or they resign or quit. So there are two kinds of people, but it doesn't mean that other one is better than the other one. It's just that we are all different in how we handle situations, right? Some people like I like for me, usually whatever I have to say, I will say it to the face. I am not someone that I like to keep it in my heart and I will take revenge silently. That is not my character, right? But there are other people, uh, their capacities, they can really build everything in the heart and they take revenge very silently. I have met a lot of people like that in my life, right? So, uh, of course, you can decide which is more healthy, right? We are adults, we know which is more better, which is a healthier with toxic level, we know, right? But I'm just giving you the example of what is a capacity. Then, comp uh, then capability means like, it's also like a little bit like synonym for competence. Capability means like, you know, if you say something to a person, you give instruction only one time, they are capable to catch up very fast and execute the plan exactly how you wanted. But another person, you give exactly the same instruction to another person, but they are not very capable to do it uh, like, you know, independently or understand everything right away to execute the plan, right? So everybody like is different, but as a professional in whatever the thing that you are working, we can always develop these skills, okay? So how you can do activities to develop these is like you can go shadowing. So uh, Fayaz, shadowing means like, for example, you try to like, let's say you join a company newly, you follow somebody like a senior or a boss behind him to know what the work is like, right? That is shadowing so that you get uh, accustomed uh, to the uh, system and you learn what are the new things in the company that you need to learn to start your job effectively and efficiently. You attend conference, you go for workshops, right? You read on certain subjects, right? You take relevant courses. Uh, you can even teach somebody, right? Uh, so like I said last time, you have enough resources in life if you have the passion, the determination, and the time management. Like if you want to learn, there is enough sources that you can access and learn, right? Uh, likewise, just as much as you want to learn, we also discussed about certain barriers that you can come across in professional development uh, and health and social care. Like I said, sometimes it's not because we don't know how to manage time, but because so much of work has been piled up on us, sometimes we have lack of time, right? Uh, everybody, if you ask today, everybody will say, Harima busy, Godak Vadati and Ama, like Harima Marim Vadika manage Kadakane because I, and it is the truth, it's not, it's, it's, it's just life now. Life is very different to 20, 30 years ago, right? I, I remember as a child, 
if I compare my childhood and even you all will say, compare your childhood to a child now, look at the situations that they are going through today, mentally itself, how much of uh, challenges that they are going through. I think Taranga can, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, understand this more as a mother of what her child is going through in a country like this, right? Like things that her child doesn't deserve to worry, her child has to go through, like missing school, then, you know, worrying about, like so many things, the child is under pressure, like during our all level time, I never had to worry about whether I can sit for the exam, right? I never had to worry that there will be power cuts during my all level time. So I was fortunate to do everything in my education time without additional stress. The stress was only about passing, uh, maintaining my scores, maintaining my grades because the rest of all was good for us, right? So, but a child now, sadly is going through so much pressure that she should not deserve to go through right so and the lack of time even like you know parents pressurizing them to go here go there you know this class that class, like so many things right even for us like I don't like even in my workplace I just don't have one job like I have to manage the lectures on Saturday Sunday then my other weekday work like we have so much to do within a given time and top of that there are deadlines that we need to do and then we talk about shortage of staff. Sometimes people are not IT competent. Uh, shift patterns, like I said last time, some people prefer to work in the night. Some people prefer to work in the morning. So if someone who has loves to work in the night and if they are put to the morning, it is a difficulty for them to adjust, right? So certain things can cause barriers in professional development in health and social care. And also like now, one of the main issues is like lack of funding, right? So we do not have good, like the, when there are lack of funds, it can be an issue to sort of sustain a maintenance in a particular corporate sector, a school or whatever. Like, uh, like uh, the economic crisis in Sri Lanka, where our schools provided early morning breakfast was stopped, right? And that becomes an additional cost for the families who rely on that breakfast in the morning for their children. So, right, because when the whole thing, the, when the money economy becomes an issue, uh, there is going to be a problem in a lot of areas, right? So, that's all. That's what we were discussing. So, how can we overcome barriers? So, how can we overcome when there is a lack of time? So, if you feel there is not enough time, I said yesterday, you sit and you write out all the things that you need to do in your journal. And then you just uh, analyze it what is the most important thing that you need to do right away? Like let's say for task one, the deadline is coming for the 9th of uh, October and for a particular next task is deadline is on the 15th of October. So you kind of need to prioritize, okay, which one do I need to do first, right? That is one effective way that you can overcome this lack of time. But for that, the best way is you need to first of all, write down what exactly you need to do. So I will give you like my personal experience for me. I love writing down everything that I have to do, even if I don't know how to do or what to do. It takes a whole big load from my system the moment I start to write down every single thing I need to do. And then when once I finish one task, I just give a tick and then I eventually see how the ticks keeps on going. And then I get that, you know, super amazing happiness and even inner strength. OK, I can go on now. And that is the time you feel OK to stay up a little bit late, have a cup of coffee uh, because you start to like, enjoy because you see that, OK, one by one, one by one, one by one, your things are getting sorted and it's getting completed. Right. So that is a very effective way when you have lack of time, you need to sit and plan for that. You need to write everything that you need to do. Right. And if you feel like, uh, example, Fayaz, last time I said was like in a COVID pandemic, in an organization or in a healthcare sector, let's say there were 20 people who were working and suddenly because of the COVID pandemic, 10 people had to like, you know, go uh, out of work because they are all affected with COVID and they need to sort of now quarantine. So now what happens is the remaining 10 people have to carry out the additional 10 people's work. So in this situation, the best thing that they can do is Unity is the first thing. All 10 of them, they sit, they talk, 
they discuss okay what is the best way forward they ask okay what are you comfortable in this particular uh, situation and then they ask okay do you like this and sometimes maybe two people would come say okay i also like this and that person will say i also like to do this so in that situation the best way to move forward without any conflict is one person needs to be a little bit giving in okay fine i i usually do this usually when i am in a a group meeting uh i always try to avoid much as possible conflict because for me personally i would tell i hate when it comes to group work because you will meet very difficult people you will meet people who don't do anything who you will meet people who don't contribute anything and you will meet people who silently do everything and who won't tell you anything also so all my life i have met so many kinds of people and for me to be honest the hardest is dealing different personalities so that is also a very big professional development is like how you interact with people now in my organization right now i am working i am working not with thai people i am working with people from kenya uganda ghana australia america france germany like almost 50 nationalities are there in the workplace i am working so you can imagine their minds the way and 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 they are all very older than me they are all in their past 30s and 40s and like for me it is a big age gap and difference in culture different in nationality religion everything so you can imagine how it is to deal with that kind of uh, situation right different 50 nationalities when it comes to meetings right so but what the first thing i would take is be very observant the first thing is like the moment you disagree on something don't be like fast to like you know respond or react sometimes i do that i have gone through that experience where i am very reactive where i respond very fast but what i also do is i would come back home and i would think i would reflect you call it reflection how could i have done it better next time or how could i do it better next time that is a reflective so these are all professional development strategies so this is very important because dealing with human beings is the most challenging thing that you could ever go through with not not even in your job even your own friend your own sometimes your own family members they are different to you even though you are blood related we are all very diff- we are all unique you will not have another uh, taranga in planet maybe there will be people who look like taranga but that personality will be unique to her only so that is why i cannot emphasize enough by the importance of professional development is if you know how to like develop yourself professionally there could be lot of things that you can overcome right so if you have a shortage of staff like try your level best to give in so like if i come back i usually try my level best not to get into conflicts or arguments i try to i try to be the one okay that's fine okay then you take it i'll do this that's fine are you okay yeah okay then fine i'll take this like it depends right if i feel something it's too advantageous that they are trying to use me then of course i will stand my ground but if i feel i can manage and i can avoid a conflict situation then i would be the one to give in that is a professionally a developed skill that i think everybody needs to inculcate okay uh if like i said if you think you don't have it skills if you think you don't speak good english if you think you are you need to improve on your writing yesterday i told first and foremost is you need to find out and identify that this is where i lack this is where i need to improve is uh, self analyzing yourself first in what you need to do and how you are going to do so you need to understand okay is it writing that i am bad if so how am i going to improve myself in writing right i can go and take up a course i could watch youtube videos i could start writing i could let somebody to correct and give them their feedback right so they can never use an excuse saying oh it's too expensive oh it's like this no because there are enough free resources not like our great grandparents time where they have to go to a library book an appointment take this specific book particular page no everything now is in uh, with under our fingertip within seconds you can search and browse and get whatever you want so you have to have that determination or that uh, what do you call drive 
to go behind something if you feel that you need to improve on a particular thing it is a professional development so shift patterns also the manager should understand okay if taranga is always working in the night and if she doesn't like maybe monday and friday she will work in the night and tuesday and wednesday she will work in the morning so that is an effective leadership quality a leader needs to know how to professionally build an organization to be fair to every employee regardless of ethnicity age gender color he needs to be fair to every employee so that every employee feels that their leader or their boss is treating everybody equally and they will have that you know happiness to come back to work and for them also to give everything in their best possible way so that is why i said the simple thing is here about the human values and qualities if those human values and qualities are developed it is very easy to build yourself professionally and when you build yourself professionally whatever the outcome that you are looking for in your healthcare sector in your corporate sector in your education institution whatever it may be you could see that the benefits are now reaping okay so and i also said like lack of funding you can't just say oh we don't have enough funds so we can't do this because we don't have funds we don't have a washroom so the washroom is stinking we don't have to issue no be that person that you can make a change right now i like i said in the uh, previous school that i was teaching before i got my master's scholarship in thailand uh, i wanted to teach via powerpoint nobody was wanting to support i didn't stop myself from there and i wanted to bring fundraising and i raised a lot of funds by so many things like achar we been putting a movie and raising funds and then we collected and we bought a projector and to this day they are making use of that projector and only in 2020 whether they liked it or not they all had to go online for teaching because at that time again all the teachers were way older than me they didn't really think about this idea that we have to teach you know through technology but look now everybody has to know about technology because almost since 3 years the mode of teaching has become through technology so that is why you need to uh, accept if a person brings a novel idea don't insult or discriminate or be ridicule them you need to think bigger okay this person has a new idea maybe this is good maybe this idea can take a lot of things forward maybe in the future this idea is the one that's going to come into use you know so this is also professional development you know accepting another person's idea like nobody now even whatever i say you may not agree that's fine you may disagree that's also fine but there is always a way to sort of how to say accept or reject in a very professional manner like if taranga says oh miss afrida like i don't agree okay taranga i am i am happy you don't disagree and she uh, she says because my point is okay that's fine that's true so there is always a way how you handle a situation very diplomatically so this uh, comes with uh, how to say uh, practice uh, with uh, experience Uh, and also encountering different kinds of people because every person you encounter in your life trust me you would have learned something new maybe is uh, you learned a lesson from them or maybe they became a blessing in your life that is why um, i love to interact with people sometimes i really don't know but i always like keep the benefit of the doubt okay this person can be a good lesson in my life or this person could be a good blessing in my life like you have to have that mind open right because all those is going to help you to develop yourself professionally so any question students write up until now i i just uh, uh, summarized it but it's good to summarize every lesson uh, backwards a bit because it's always a continuation so the more we sort of recap you are going to have everything fresh in your head when you are writing the assignment which is why i always like go back 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 and then come front so that you guys won't forget when it comes to your assignments right it's very fresh any questions taranga tilani uh, danush any questions you all have because i assume the others are uh, microphones are muted or not working so i'm just mentioning the names taranga any questions no miss you repeated so many okay. times so i understood na okay right so uh so uh, fires mainly i did the recap today because you were not there for around 3 weeks so i thought it was only fair that uh, you had a recap because i'm assuming that you might not watch the video 
uh, but I know the others also could gain more from it, right? Because it's always going to be the same concept that's going to go further, right? So sources that you can get uh, from professional development is like, again, education, organization, you participate, you do your research, uh, improve job performance, incre increase duties and responsibilities, right? Uh, all these uh, skill-based training, these are ways that you can improve your professional development. So what should be your goals and targets for professional development plan? Like I said yesterday and uh, also last two weeks, uh, is you need to develop always a new set of skills. I just said it while ago. Like I have certain skills which I still want to develop and I am specific about it, right? Taranga, do you remember the four, uh, the four words that we yesterday used when it comes to a skill? I gave a good example yesterday and I told you five, we, we spoke on the SMART goals. Do you remember that, what, I, what we discussed yesterday? That is where we stopped yesterday. Do you remember? If you take a, a task, how do you do it? One thing is I told, it, was, it, should, it should be measurable. Do you remember the other points, Taranga? Or Tilani or anyone who remembers the SMART goals when you are learning a skill, what, what should it be? It's okay if you make mistakes. What do you all think, students? Specific. Very good. Excellent. Specific. Well done. What else do you remember? Just it's okay if it's not in order. It uh, should be achievable, measurable. Uh, achievable. Very good. Achievable. Specific. Very good. What else? Time. Uh, time management. Time management. It should be measurable. Right. Uh, what is what is, I think we learned. A do you remember relevant. more? Yeah. Excellent. Relevancy. Right. Good. So I will, uh, we will go through that slide, but I just wanted to see if you all remember. So good, that shows that you all have been attentive. Well done. So developing a new skill, you can do it by taking an online course, or like I said before, you could follow a senior or someone who is extremely trained in that particular field, uh, just to get the idea how things are happening in that company, right? Uh, you can also develop your workplace skills by, you know, uh, uh, tools and practice uh, practices like always I think I cannot emphasize this enough never get used to just like getting only theory knowledge like even though this is like I feel uh, a lecture where we don't see each other or where we don't do anything practically but I feel the amount that you all gain can be applied a lot practically that's why I like this course for you all because Many already have said it to me that practically you all are getting better in your academic writing. Hopefully you guys will be way better in your uh, uh, third and fourth assignment, right? And you all will feel after six months, you all have learned new vocabulary, new English terms from three lecturers, right? And you all can put this into practice next time when you communicate. Or maybe when you all read an article, Maybe those words were not very familiar for you all one or two years ago, but now it's more familiar because of the way that we have mentioned those words or used those words. So these are certain practical things that you can extract from this course that can help you all in your other practical skills that you all are going to pursue further, right? So you have to improve your workplace skills or always try to improve the skills that you need to do practically, right? So again, same thing, online course, um, speaking club, if it is a speech that you want to improve. Uh, and everybody needs to be, everybody has leadership qualities. Uh, we are all, we, no one is born a leader, but we can always acquire the skills that a leader has, right? Uh, leadership quality is mainly like, you know, sometimes suddenly they give you a task, you know, they don't even give you enough time to plan. Uh, they just drop a bomb. It has happened to me. But in that situation, okay, but most of the Asian mindset, these are the complaints we as Asians have, including me, right? Including me, I have this attitude. Sometimes I get very angry. Why can't they inform us one week ago? Like, I'll give you a very, a very, very um, 
a, a practical example that happened three days ago in my workplace. So basically, uh, we had to do an event uh, for the students, uh, and the Thai, all the Thai lecturers, they knew about it uh, six months ago. So usually, what happens in my organization, the Thai and the foreigners. Uh, because sometimes the communication problem, we don't get to communicate very openly and transparently. So what happened was, um, how to say, uh, they already knew about this event that they need to deliver uh, on the 5th of October, but we only got to know just one day on the, uh, yeah, one day before we have to uh, resume our close our work, right? So now what happened, all the, all the people there got irritated, upset, angry, you know, shouting, why can't the head of department inform about us? How come the Thai people didn't inform? So many problems, like everybody's complaining. And now the, and the, and the joke of the story here is, now the, even though some of the people went and spoke to our boss about this, now our, our boss is a, is a, he's from the UK, he's a British man. Now for him, these complaints are now he's saying, I understand what to do. This is how the Thai people, they don't communicate with the foreigners. But what to do, you all have to do something. So he's also holding his ground that uh, whether hook by hook or crook, you need to do this particular task. So now what happened when we had the meeting, everybody, you know, now we are running out of time. Today, 1 p.m., uh, we have to finish everything. Now, instead of planning the activity, everybody sat and, you know, complain, complain, complain. So what I did was I said, let us all stop now. No point about complaining and blaming who, why they didn't tell us earlier, who didn't tell us earlier, why this was not informed sooner. Because whether we like it or not, we have to do this by 1 p.m. today for the students, right? So, and all the teachers, they calm down. They all calm down. And then I said, let me uh, plan an activity. Uh, I we will all take 30 seconds to speak about something and we will play uh, this particular inspirational music and that's it. And that's how the thing ended. And then everybody came to me and said, oh, Miss Afrida, you are brilliant. You had an I said, no, it is because as a team, we have to do something to salvage the situation because whether we like it or not, our boss is expecting us to finish it. And all of you all went on talking about how we have no time, how we have to do this, why didn't they inform us? They knew six months ago, we only know one day before. So I said it's pointless because it, we are only wasting time by complaining. So I have changed my attitude now, but the, I was also once upon a time like them, right? But what I developed my, in myself is professionally something called reflection. Because when they were all doing that, I reflected immediately, oh, I was also like this some time ago, but I am no longer like this because we need to get this thing done today. Our boss is expecting us to get this done today. So there is no choice but to, you know, go forward and, you know, lead it. So everybody has a leadership skills, but the first good leadership skill that everyone should build up professionally is the attitude, right? Including myself, I always say this attitude. Like for me, my attitude is, if I have something disturbing, how will I control my temper or how will I react to a situation? Like, like you all would have sensed with me. Sometimes I get very, uh, very irritated or very upset when you all don't respond. But now what I do is I tend to if you I tend to sort of like, you know, take it over past because I understand sometimes you all feel uncomfortable in answering in English. Or sometimes what I do is I just continuously go with the slides. And until that you all cooperate and interact with me. So I will always like, I always reflect strategies on how I could develop myself better uh, in terms of what my weaknesses are. So it's the same thing for all of you all. Practically, you need to professionally think, what are my weaknesses that I could improve professionally that can have no issues in future in my workplace or with my friend or with my spouse. So like, for example, uh, I'm still like I will like inshallah hopefully I'm going to leave this place I mean the sense that I'm actually living with somebody right with a friend but of course we two are different individuals and it's very difficult for me to like be like that so my but I, I learned a lot of tolerance in this uh, few months that I had to stay with her right but like before I would just you know like shout at her and you know I, I had different ways that I cope but I reflected, I realized what matters end of the day is until I exit, exit out, 
what matters the most is maintaining the peace and the calmness because the more you maintain the peace and the calmness you can focus better in your other work like usually i don't know how it is for you all for me personally when something is affecting right i tend to connect that problem to my other areas of life it can affect my work it can affect my relationship with my other other uh, with my loved ones right it can have many impacts so i realized if the root cause is this person then i need to have a better professional strategy how when she disturbs my mental peace how i'm going to react right so i that is another skill that i have learned so always it is a good way to reflect on yourself if something goes wrong like reflect okay where did this go wrong why did this happen to me from my side why did this happen okay something certain sometimes in life things happen to you because it was not at all your mistake i understand and i completely agree but that is usually say around 25% is that but usually if you go to see 75% of the times in our life our problems is because of how whom we have trusted whom we have shared or whom we have vented or how we have reacted our temp whatever right if you really uh, after lectures today if you really reflect on yourself you could understand most of the 75% is you it is within you uh, that a situation has become sometimes bad right but i do agree sometimes 25% totally it is not up to you right sometimes that's why we need to own our own responsibilities for our choices but we can always reflect and develop it professionally to make it better right uh, like i said yesterday also the network professional network we uh, discuss fires like in a workplace you will never have a friend maybe you can have a colleague in that also maybe one just one good colleague who can be like a friend there are situations like that and it has happened to me who have been a friend starting from a colleague right but the best thing that you can do in this professional development when you are building a network also i said no matter what personal problems that you are going through outside your workplace or within your workplace do not share it with a colleague um, at least unless for a 6 to 1 year until you really know one person really well who is trustworthy because everybody in a workplace is your competitor who is always waiting to you know bring you down or try to go above you in terms of uh, income in terms of position we all know that like just like country politics exist there are politics existing within corporate sector within uh, colleagues with the boss every week right so it's always good to be like okay hi hello how are you are you fine and you know just talk on very neutral things maybe about a match or maybe about even i think i wouldn't suggest that discussing politics or religion or anything that is very sensitive is better as much as possible to avoid among your network that is also a big professional development very neutral things about maybe a sri lankan indian match or maybe something like you know a, a training program where they both would like to go right those are okay things because uh professional development many people have got themselves into issue by being too open and discussing a lot of things so it's always better to avoid and to be always professional uh, if you really have issues it's best to always to reach a friend outside your workplace or reach to your family or your loved ones okay um uh, these are just uh, professional work networks that you can join like facebook linkedin and so on right uh and also yesterday we discussed about benchmark means a standard like anything benchmark like we said if you want to have a quality uh in a product the benchmark is having the uh, sls or the iso uh signs right so if you take a consumable product like something that you want to eat and you are having a doubt oh is this product having a lot of carcinogenic chemicals or is this product healthy to clear your doubt the benchmark is go back and see if that product has the sls or the iso uh, symbols right so if those symbols exist it should give you sort of a, a sort of a comfort that these products are safe to consume right and i asked can we have iso and sls in uh, humans in people in healthcare sector and the answer was no because like taranga said uh humans or patients or children they are not products they are living human beings right so they will have different 
policies or legislation. So at the very start of our unit, we were discussing about, you know, if you are working with uh, toxic or carcinogenic chemicals, you can actually go for the, uh, what do you call symbols like, you know, kosh, or if you are working with uh, differently able people or bedridden people, you have different policies and legislations that you need to follow, right? Those are the benchmark when it comes to vulnerable population in a healthcare sector. But if it comes to consumable products, it is always the SLS or the ISO symbols, right? So benchmarking is establishing a standard of excellence, right? Um, and as a component of total quality management, benchmark is a continuous process by which an organization can measure and compare uh, its own process with those organizations, right? So we learned about uh, types of benchmarking, internal, competitive, functional, and generic. So yesterday, uh, Janaka, he shared his experience about uh, his tea factory as a manager. Uh, he said, like, to get an audit, usually there is an internal audit, sorry, and there is an external audit too. So this is always done for the standard. Uh, excellence uh, before something is going to be uh, what you call out of the market to make sure that the products that the company or the factory is producing is up to that standard excellent level, right? Uh, any questions, Fayaz, if you have any questions, you can uh, just, uh, I don't know because I think your microphone, uh, I'm assuming that you have understood, but uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can drop a message or Yes. Uh, what about Mitni, Taranga? Anything with regarding benchmarking? Is it okay? Okay, miss. Okay. Uh, yeah. And yesterday we said about job satisfaction. Like if you ask, uh, if you do a survey and if you go for a statistic, if you ask somebody, are you happy with your job? There are people who will say, I hate my job. There'll be people who say, yes, I love my job. There's nothing that I could think of other than this job that I'm doing. But in Sri Lanka, you don't have that luxury of, you know, uh, quitting a job because you don't have job satisfaction because whether we, whether people like it or not, they have to bring food to the plate. There are people depending on them for uh, food. So whether they like it or not, they tend to stick to the job. So most of us have also been in this situation, right? Sometimes whether like even if we don't like our job, we tend to be there because of the responsibilities that comes with it, right? Sometimes you're, you're a child who is the one who is spending for your parents' uh, medical or for their parents' uh, uh, maintenance because we all know uh, in our culture or any, any, any child in a proper way, cannot abandon the parents if they need you because they grew they they whenever they were young and when we were children however much they could do for us they did it and when they become old the the job role reverses right the responsibility becomes reversed you have to take care of them and they rely on you so so even if you don't like your job sometimes there is no choice but you have to do and sometimes it is not only the parents that they look after they look after their wife they look after their children so that is why i i encourage so much like like for example um i will give you another example uh in thailand i am the first sri lankan muslim to come to thailand to do a master's program right so this is a big shocking thing in my university uh, because they don't see many, uh, they actually never, not many, have never ever uh, seen a Muslim girl coming to do her master's because you know in Sri Lanka the, the mentality that they have is that they will, she will be married and have the kids and, and that's it. But uh, luckily my parents, especially my father had a, uh, because both my, my brother and sister are also doctors, they're medical doctors. So his dream was that we pursue in education. So rest, you know, can wait. And to this day, I think one of the greatest uh, gift that I ever got, I would say that my pay, my father giving me that leverage to go very further in my education, right? So even in the university, I'm the first Sri Lankan Muslim and also in the workplace that I'm working, also I'm the first Sri Lankan Muslim. And these exact, people also they ask they say that they're very surprised to see me coming uh, this far right because I have to say that there is 
uh, no value as you trying to have your own income. Like your husband could be a, a billionaire, a millionaire, but you will eventually understand that you being independent and trying to have your own, uh, what do you call, stability, where you can stand your own ground is very, very important. I think people who are uh, here older than me uh, can understand better uh, where I am going at. But uh, another way is also, this is also why I'm saying it's a professional development, is you, uh, as women, uh, what I would say is that not trying to think, okay, everything should be taken care of my, my spouse, no. Or even the children, I know so many children by even, I, I, would, I would say like, I think I started working when I was 20. Yes, 20. So I, I never had that mindset that, oh, till the end, my parents, of course, for university, they covered and all. But whatever way I could contribute, at least to maintain my self expenses, uh, I tried that. Because why I, I actually, I, that's what I'm surprised. Uh, today, children, I one word that I can use is they are very spoiled. Um, uh, because parents tend to think that giving love uh, by whatever they want or giving whatever they ask, that they are doing good. But the saddest part, these very children that you do so much are the exact children who comes in return doing nothing to you when a time comes. This is the truth. Uh, so that is why it is very important when it comes to responsibility, making them understand. Now, from, in my situation, I because I grew up with a very loving family and they never expected anything. But in my situation, because they showed so much love and support, I want to give them back. But sadly, this generation doesn't think that way. They will never think they supported me. They gave me so much. I need to give them back. They will never, ever think. So for this generation, the way that you can make them tough is giving them responsibility making them to be responsible for their actions and mistakes. That is professional development in children, right? If they did something wrong, then and there, you don't need to beat the child, but you can say, okay, you did this. Until you do this, you will be grounded for this situation. No, you will. You, they need to feel apologetic and sorry for what they do. I am very tough as it, uh, I'm very tough when it comes to my students. Like I said, when I come to teach high school students, the only thing that I work more is their values. If I feel I am disrespected, if I feel I am not spoken politely, I am very, very, very tough. I have had many episodes and all these students have come and cried and apologized. And I don't blame them. I blame the culture and the way the parents made them to grow up, right? So that is why I, I say that professional development needs to happen, not just when you enter the university or the um, the organization you need to give these values and qualities right at a younger age when you do that it is easier to further enhance their professionalism as they grow older but if they don't have those basic values and ethics and honesty and integrity by 21 18 if they don't have it is going to be a big challenge to get them to be in the right path you know they cannot sustain maybe in a job for long they are going to have issues with other people that is why I, I, I prefer we just maybe have one and a half months more for these sessions. Do take these valuable messages, give it to somebody else, whoever you know, because that can take a long way and we can expand the cycle of, you know, make, making a better society, right? So that is why I say that I can't emphasize enough about professional development, because if you go to see the whole world, is in a chaos or the war or corruption or destruction, whatever that we are facing today is because of this lack of professional development. If there is professionalism in everything that we do as human beings in day to day life, there could be a lot of things that would have overcome by now. Right. So, yeah. So like when it comes to job satisfaction also, uh, like I said, um, sometimes whether we like it or not, if there could be some ways we could make to like those jobs. Like we said, you can have a, a close colleague where you go for your lunch together, have a tea break, a coffee break, right? Maybe sometimes you can, you know, go for an exercise session so that you will look forward again to go back to your job, right? So it's all about thinking ahead and reflecting in what you need to do, right? 
uh, again, the same thing, taking the relevant courses, shadowing another department, finding a mentor. Uh, yesterday we discussed about a mentor. It's like not a really a friend, but more similar or a can be a friend who can be a friend who will always guide you uh, what you have to do, what you need to do. So every aspect in your life, especially when it comes to uh, working or when you are doing some kind of research, you need to have a mentor because they are the ones who can have more experience and they already know the uh, challenges that could come, the issues that could come. So before they, before the person who is in this field, who is so new to it, before they face these issues, they could be guided. And for that, you need to have a good mentor. Okay, students, hold on a second. Hold on a second. And the next one is how we set professional development goals. So like I said before also, if you want to develop professional development goal, the first thing is you need to understand what you are working towards. Like example is if Taranga says her, her goal is to maybe open another branch of her daycare uh, outside Colombo, she needs to be very specific. That is her goal, right? Or if Metni says that she wants to get into university after her advanced level, she has a specific goal. So if you have a specific goal, then it is very easy for you to know what you're working towards, right? And now it's the smart goals that I just asked a while ago. It needs to be uh, under certain criteria. Is it specific? Is it measurable? Is it achievable? Is it relevant? And is it time bound, right? Like specific means if Taranga wants to get into university, say arts or medical faculty, she can't be thinking about going for a uh, being a being a chef because being a chef and being a lawyer are two different things. So it should be specific. She wants to go. OK, let's say she wants to be a doctor, so she wants to go to medical school. So she can't be thinking about, you know, being a chef because her goal is a doctor and medical school. So just be specific. Then measurable, like I said, you need to know how far you can measure th this particular goal. Okay, uh, goal should have a clear way of identifying whether you are achieved them. If not, how close you came to them, right? So let's say that uh, for medical school, you need to have 75 out of 100. Uh, but your first uh, exam, you got 74. So she needs to know, okay, next time, how can I get that extra one mark, right? And achievable means how far you can achieve. So when it comes to being a writer, you can't just be a writer in just one day or two days or one month, right? It takes a long process of discipline. It takes a long process of skills, right? That is achievable and relevant. Like relevancy is also important. Like it needs to align with your long term aspirations, right? So what are you working for? If it is a medical school, that is a relevant thing that you will work for. OK, Taranga, any questions on this? Smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable and relevance. Is it clear? And Mithni and OK. Uh, and yesterday also I said how to create a development plan in health and social care. Uh, if you feel there is limited time, uh, you need to say you need to give yourself a break. It's important, right? Or you write down everything that you need to achieve, right? There are strategies that you need to create uh, in person development plan and health in health and social care. So sometimes the stress because of the busy schedule or the tight resources, sometimes maybe 10 people are there, only two computers are there. So there are a lack of resources. So in that situations, you can sort of allocate. OK, for this particular task, you will go from 9 to 10. You will go from 11 to 12 like that. You allocate sometimes when you lack resources, you actually work in a way that you can allocate. OK, differently. Uh, Taranga, can you tell me how can you benefit from using a personal development plan? Can you give me an example? How can you use a personal development plan? What is the benefit of using a personal development plan? Can you just give me an example? If we have plan, uh, our time is uh, not wasting. Very good. You have time efficiency. Very good. When there is time efficiency, what is another thing that will happen?
I can use the time for other things. Very good. You can do more things. Yes, very good. What else? Uh, what about Metni? Uh, what, what do you think, Metni? Can you give some benefits of using a personal development plan? Can you give me some one example? Taranga said about time management. It improves motivation, man. Motivation. Very motivation. good. Very yes. So planning helps you to take the thoughts that float aimlessly around your brain and record them in an actionable format. Uh, it's especially useful for healthcare workers as your daily schedule may leave you little room to pause and think about your aims. That is true. Sometimes like when there is so much going on in your head, sometimes it can be very difficult. Like, you know, you are thinking about this, you're thinking about that, you're thinking about your family, you're thinking about this patient. I think we all have gone through this situation. It's like, you're worrying about not just one responsibility, but many responsibility. But when you plan, okay, today I am going to do this particular thing and you complete it, then you have some time maybe for a little relaxation, maybe to listen to a music, to have, go and have a cup of co coffee. That is why in life, uh, I cannot emphasize again enough, planning is very, very important, especially when you are trying to do a task, like just imagine your children are going to go for a concert. What is the first planning they need to do? Okay, how many are going to be in the concert? Which student is going to present what? Which are, what is their role? How will their costumes be? Imagine without any of this planning, you get, bring a, a big gathering to see the concert and just tell, tell, them, tell the kids to do. Imagine the disaster that can happen. That's what is why a planning is important. And if a team is working for a particular task, even then planning is very important because it's not just one person involved in this job role. Many people have come together, so they need to discuss collectively how they plan this, um, what you call the schedule or the meeting or anything, right? Can you understand? Students, do you all get it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so, for example, um, first one, it provides you with clear goals. It helps you to identify your strengths and weaknesses. And that's another thing. When you have a personal plan, you will have it will help you to identify your strengths and weaknesses. And it also improves your employability. Means like, you know, if an organization understand that you can plan like something ahead of time or in schedule, they can have a better chance to be employed because like now mainly companies and organizations hire you not based on how many A's you got in your A-levels, how many A's you got in your O-levels, no. It is actually about the skills that you have. How well can you work under pressure, right? How well you can uh, manage your time, right? All these are the most important things. So like, for example, uh, there is a saying that Usually, a CEO will hire somebody for just three things. That is the character, attitude, and reliability. Character meaning, like, are they honest? Are they truthful? Right? Uh, are they genuine? Will they do everything in a proper, respectful way? Attitude, like, for example, if it's a stressful situation, what is your attitude? Okay, do you, are you going to sit and, you know, a, a complain about it or are you just going to give up on it? No, the attitude is okay. How am I going to salvage the situation with the given situation, right? Reliability means like they give you a task. Like I say, okay, Tilani, are you sure you can do this for me? And she says, yes, ma'am, I can do. But the next day she has not done it for me. That is a bad reliability because I trust my entire self thinking Tilani would do it. But she doesn't do it. But if she has done it, I always have this faith. Okay, any responsibility, I can rely on Tilani because she is responsible. And she, whenever she says she will do it, she is going to do it. Right? And it also improves your performance. Okay? It increases your motivation. It helps you track your progress. Exactly. Like planning. It's very important. Like I think when we were students, when we did O-levels and A-levels, I have done this. Like when I sit for a maths past papers before my maths exam, I usually compare myself, okay, 
one month ago for this paper i got maybe 34 out of 40 now i'm getting 36 out of 40 this helps to sort of track your progress so when you track your progress it helps you to understand better okay what can i do better next time how can i do better next time and when i feel there is a good progress automatically i will get a motivation it's it's just like you know the to-do list you sit and you write everything that you need to do and once you know what you to do and when you keep going and when you see those sticks going you get the automatic motivation uh, to to go on with the other tasks without getting stressed uh, your sense of purpose do you all all have a sense of purpose students in whatever you all doing i will ask taranga first i will ask taranga first taranga do you have a sense of purpose in what you are doing Yes, Miss. Mm. In what way? What is the what, what is the sense of purpose you feel you are getting from being an entrepreneur, running your own thing? What do you feel? Share with us. I am very satisfaction about it because uh, um, I am not uh, working under pressure, no. Mm. Also, so you are not very really. Relief. Very relief, exactly. And not only under pressure, you're not working under anyone anymore, isn't it? So you can, yeah. yeah, you don't have that, you know, pressure of, you know, worrying about deadlines, timelines, right? So that's great. That That is a sense of purpose, right? For me, my sense of purpose is knowing that I have an impact on somebody in a positive way. If I feel I can give an advice to somebody that has helped them. Now, last time, like Janaka uh, shared that, because he had certain things how he approached in his workplace and he said that certain things what I have said has helped him to think better and the way he approaches. So for me, a sense of purpose was felt accomplished because for me and if I feel like even these past three months, like students who are really smart, but nobody actually gave them an encouraging word that they can do it. So this there is a boy called Supercon. It's a very funny name. Uh, he is actually very big and a very, very fat boy, but very good in sports, uh, but writes very good notes, uh, takes a very neat handwriting. And every time this student has like, you know, fail marks. But I told him was only one time I told him, you are a very good student, Supercon, you are writing very, very good notes and you are actually very smart. Those encouraging words were enough for him. This time he didn't pass, I mean, he didn't fail anything. He passed with the average mark. And I was so happy. And now he's so, so happy that apparently all the other students also are very shocked at how he passed. And he has actually written very good answers. Sometimes it's all about the positive impact that you make in somebody's life, right? That is a sense of purpose, right? Is he's just one example, and there was another student also. He's very smart, but because he interacts with the very other, very other uh, bad student, uh, when I asked a question, he answered very well, and I told him, "Don't get fooled by your friend because you don't know how smart you are." That was the changing point for this student. He never sat with this student who is like like bad. He completely like cut off from that student. He started like really working and he has now got into a B grade, right? So it's all for me, that is my sense of purpose. It's about that positive impact that I can make in a, in a student's life. For me, that is why uh, I love doing what I do with passion is because I know there is an impact that can happen in, a, in, a, in, in changing who they are in terms of quality, in terms of character, right? So that is for me, it's a sense of purpose. So today... Uh, after the session, whatever that you are doing, try to find a sense of purpose in what you are doing. Like if you are not doing a social service, it's okay. You can still find a maybe, you know, if if the Janaka is doing a management in a tea factory, he said his sense of purpose may be through import, trying to improve the country's economy. That should be his sense of purpose. So every time your sense of purpose in whatever the job that you do, Try to see how much positive impact that you can make in terms of other people, right? That that is very good because it's end of the day nothing is more happy than you knowing that you have made uh, a positive impact. Okay. 
Right. And also, Miss, I can take decision uh, towards the children as well as the teacher. Good, good way. Very good. Yes, of course. Of course, exactly. You can make the decision. That's very true. That, that's a great understanding too, right? That is your sense of purpose. Because see, Taranga, for you, there's a lot of advantage because you're doing something of your own, right? So there are a lot of, uh, what do you call, um, advantages for you. Because trust me, working under an organization or under a head is a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties. So you doing your own thing, you have a lot of uh, advantages, right? So, but you also have your own sense of purpose. That's a great thing. You must consider your goals, right? But you should always have monthly goals, weekly goals, yearly goals. It's very important. Like without goals, I don't think like it is difficult for you to sort. Sometimes people will think, oh, why am I in this world? What is my use of existence, right? So you need to consider your goals and you need to make them under the SMART framework. Like we learned about the SMART framework, right? The achievable, specific, uh, measurable, right? You need to have goals under those criteria. Increase your self-awareness, right? This is the very, very most important thing in professional development. Like reflection of yourself in within that day. Like how, what was your mistake? How, what kind of, how, how have you treated this person? The way you spoke, the way you communicated, what you did, right? If you actually, what I would say, what, what do you mean by character is, if somebody can own up to their mistakes or if they can accept for what they did wrong, that is a great character. That's a great professional development. Like, for example, many organizations and companies, they collapse because the superiors or the employees, they are not willing to accept that they are like this sort of character. Like another example, I will tell you uh, three weeks ago, uh, extremely intelligent student. Uh, but the way she behaved in my class was very inappropriate, right? I was able to tolerate for around five weeks with her, but I never ever mentioned anything to her. I never shouted at her. She, I let her do everything the way she want. But what I only did was I, I tried not to get to me. Her attitude, I never let it get to me. But like I always said, we always have something called a capacity, a tolerance that we can tolerate. So at, there was one incident where she completely went beyond her limitation. And that was the day that I took out everything that I had towards her. And I, I listed out every bad thing that she did to me, right? And she came crying and she said, Miss, I realized how wrong I was to you, right? How wrong I was to you. And she was crying and she apologized to me. And as a teacher, I could forgive because I know she was a child and she was not guided to do the right thing. And to be honest now, she is a very respectful student. And I would say that one of the most best qualities now I see in her in the class is that girl. So that is my sense of purpose, what I can do to somebody, right? So it is always a matter of guidance, like showing them, right? And self-awareness. She never knew how, how much she was causing destruction and hurt to another teacher until I brought self-awareness to her, right? So even our own self, we need to have self-awareness, okay? How hurtful it is to, your, to somebody. We need to bring self-awareness. This is the only way that you can build your character, which is important professionally, okay? Right. So like I said, these are very practical things that you can apply in your own life, right? These are practical things. Uh, so professional development needs to come as young as it can come, right? Values and ethics and so on. Uh, what do you think about significant personal growth, Taranga? What do you think in your understanding? Significant personal growth. Can you tell me? What do you think about the significant growth? Uh, unique, uh, unique can, you, qualities. can you give me an example? Like how? What is your significant growth? What can you say?
like an example taranga what is your example let me what is your example somebody just contribute like what do you think give me a second nice um sorry um where was i yeah what is your personal growth taranga that you got being an entrepreneur develop my career develop your career yes your personal growth is one thing is i would say that you have built a confidence uh, of not relying on somebody when you fail situation was getting bad in your previous workplace right remember because that was your personal growth you grew uh, you didn't let that particular challenge to stop you from where you wanted to go right you continue yes yes self education so on right so that's why they're saying learning is a never ending process and it's a good thing a desire to continuously expand your capabilities drives you forward recognize how much of improved your skills is satisfying it helps you to maintain momentum right which enables you to deliver higher quality healthcare and reach new opportunities in your career so you need to have a significant personal growth right and also it helps you to organize your time better so um so for example a physical representation of your priorities help you to focus completing an important beneficial task and you need and you learn to let go of uh, unimportant task right so that is like i think metni told that i cannot remember metni or taranga like you can org- if you if you organize your time better you have additional time to do another task and as a result your productivity uh, your efficiency everything will get better okay uh i want to show a video now like on the summary of everything that we have done uh before we go to the next slide let me just share with you all hold on uh can you all only tell if you all can see and hear taranga tilani can you just respond one of you all because you are the only one who can respond via the microphone a i mean we can see aha uh-huh. can you all hear just see can you all hear or no no me oh okay maybe what about now professional development can you hear yes, now yes can hear okay okay commonly referred to as pd is a systematic process that strengthens how professionals obtain and retain knowledge skills and attitudes pd doesn't happen by chance in order to improve organizational practices you must consciously design pd processes and content with your organization's goals in mind Professional development should leverage adult learning principles to engage learners. That means following a systematic process that includes sustaining, designing, promoting, delivering, following up, and evaluating. Offerings should be designed so that participants feel respected, the learning environment is safe and supportive, the content is relevant to participants' needs. Learning offerings are varied to address the needs of a diverse audience. Participants have opportunities to practice skills and apply new knowledge. For more information about adult learning principles, theories, and learning styles, see the next course in the series, Professional Development 201: From Basic to Dynamic. Okay. So, just to recap again, you all already know what is professional development, but I like to uh, touch on that you need to have the knowledge the skills and the attitude right you need to know if if you are learning about basic life support make sure you have the knowledge about basic life support 
skills meaning like you have you need to have the skills like when somebody is going through a uh, epilepsy or a stroke or a heart attack you know the skills what exactly you need to do at that situation attitude is like in a stressful situation how do you uh, conduct like how is your speech how is your body gestures how is your mental strength emotional strength everything right that is one thing that you need to know k s a knowledge skill and attitude right and they say that it doesn't happen by chance it never happens by chance but it happens through continuous development that needs lot of you know timing uh skills like you know the smart goals you need to you know have specific skills measurable skills you practice you work on it you know you give everything step by step okay uh and this also i need to emphasize very important like when it comes to professional development sustainability have you heard the word sustainability what do you mean by sustainability this word is used a lot what is sustainability students can you all tell me if you want to like you know sustain your weight to a good weight or to it is more like maintaining what do you need to do you need to eat healthy food you need to take proper sleep right that is sustainability so even in the professional development to have a sustainability you need to have that professional qualities right how your attitudes your skills your goals you know uh, how you plan it how you organize it right you need to have that sustainability and again you need to design something if you want to achieve a, a particular task or a goal you need to have a design a plan what are you going to do how are you going to do right then you promote it right then you deliver it then you follow it up and then you evaluate how the progress is happen so this is actually a very important cycle when it comes to professional development okay see what about professional development it should be what respectful right safe and supportive relevant right and uh, very to address the diverse audience and i told many other things about when it comes to goals how it should be measurable specific relevant time bound and so on okay uh yes any questions from the video i just summarize only the important points if you all do you all have any questions on that students no miss then we will go to uh yes we will go to domains of learning okay Recommend professional development events such as webinars should follow adult learning principles to engage learners. Adult learning theory began almost 200 years ago. However, it wasn't until recently that the concepts were fully incorporated into mainstream adult education practices. Adult learning theory asked the question, what factors impact adult learning and why? To answer that, let's explore the three domains of learning and how they relate to adult learning theory these are cognitive learning affective learning and psychomotor or behavioral learning the cognitive learning domain involves intellect the understanding of information and how that develops through application on a scale that increases from basic recall to complex evaluation and creation The affective learning domain involves our emotions toward learning and how that develops as we progress from a low order process such as listening to a higher order process like resolving an issue. The psychomotor learning domain involves our physicality and how that develops from basic motor skills to intricate performance. How do the domains of learning impact professional development? Each domain represents a continuum of processes that begins with the most simple and ends with the most complex process. 
When designing and developing professional development events, keep in mind that the audience will be comprised of adults. Most adults have mastered lower order processes in each of the domains, such as recall of information in the cognitive domain, listening and paying attention in the affective domain, and demonstrating mechanical skill, such as using a computer in the psychomotor domain. To successfully engage the audience, events must be designed to reach participants on their level, which means going beyond the basic process and challenging them on higher order processes, such as troubleshooting, prioritization, and adaptation. The three domains are often attributed to Benjamin Bloom, an educational psychologist who edited the text Taxonomy of Educational Objectives, the classification of educational goals. This is often referred to as Bloom's taxonomy. Now that we understand the application of learning domains in our professional development design, let's review other adult learning theories that can be applied to help effective professional development events. Okay, so uh, I will summarize this uh, again. Um, Students, just give me two minutes. I need to go for the calling of my prayer. Just give me two minutes. Okay, hold on. Uh, where was the video? I cannot remember. 
Yes. Uh, so basically here they uh, emphasize mostly about the domains of learning. Uh, like this is especially like I said before, uh, if you want to like professionally develop yourself, there are certain skills that you need to acquire or, or to attain, right? Uh, so for example, if you need to acquire the skill uh, of let's say maths, like if you, let's say we are, somebody is a student and is not very good in mathematics and quite weak in maths, right? So what they can go to the domain of learning, right? Uh, is of three, like how well they can remember what they have learned, uh, how far they can understand, how they apply, how they analyze, how they evaluate and how they create the concept, right? Just an example, this is a pyramid, right? So I, I like, to, to connect this domain or to this uh, to this particular thing is for professional developing, you need to have certain skills, right? I told you, you can't just like be there and say, oh, I don't have this skill. I'm, I'm not going to do anything. You need to like know, right? So for that skill, you need to like apply uh, on, on these levels, right? You need to apply on these levels, like remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating and creating. And then you would see how when you are a weak student in maths, eventually you are climbing up the ladder or up the pyramid from level to level, right? That is what they are mentioning here, right? And uh, so when you have, there are three domains that they were speaking about. And I told you uh, as an example, developing emotionally, psychologically, motor. Motor is your skills, like how you write, how you communicate, how you speak. Emotionally means in a stressful situation, how do you react? Okay, you are calm, you don't lose your temper, you don't overreact, that is emotional. Psychological also, like some people, no matter how much stress they are, they can find a life, work-life balance. They do somehow, They I know many people like that, they just somehow go to the gym. They somehow take their weekends off, I know. So these are skills that they have acquired professionally. So that is the domains that they are actually summarizing. So uh, cognitive, affective, psychomotor. Like can you see, for example, cognitive is like mathematics, how they can improve a skill. Effective means like receiving, responding, organizing, valuing, internalizing. It's, it, it's like during a stressful situation. Uh, psychomotor is usually, again, during a vulnerable situation, how do you respond? How do you react? Okay. So these are also very important in a professional development. And then the next one is uh, the chart, like how they go from behavior to your emotions to your thoughts, like how these three uh, are interconnected, right? So that is also very important. So your emotions will go to your thoughts, then your behavior, right? It is very, very important. Uh, do you all know the meaning of troubleshooting, prioritization and adaptation? Do you all know the meaning of these three words? Anybody? Students? Do you all know? Troubleshooting meaning like, for example, if there is a problem in the computer, you get a technician to come and troubleshoot. So let's say that your computer is not starting or your windows has collapsed, right? So in that situation, you get a technician or somebody to come and troubleshoot means to come and find out what is the problem that is going on. Prioritization meaning like, for example, let's say an employee or a, or a job a boss, you know, he knows how to prioritize his family, but time, how much time he needs to give for his children, for his wife, and then how much time he needs to give for his workplace. That is prioritization. That is also a very way uh, and uh, what you call a professional development, right? So that is why I said professional development doesn't just come uh, only in your workplace. It comes in handy in, in whatever the area of life. It could be even your own personal life, okay? And adaptation means the adaptability. Now, for example, I have learned to like really adapt myself for so many challenges in these past three months, right? With the person I have to share and like everything, right? And even us, like, okay, the Sri Lankan, power cuts. How many of us adapted? 
the first time it was really frustrating. We didn't know what to do, how to manage plan. But when you look back, I know for all Sri Lankans, this has been a very sad and a challenging year in many ways, right? It has been a very upsetting year. And But the good, good thing is we have all adapted, whether we like it or not, in some way or form. We have adapted our situation uh, to get adjusted with power cuts. We are adjusted to work with so much of challenges. That is adaptation. Okay. So all these troubleshooting, prioritization, adaptation, right? Uh, if you are learning with skills, how it is cognitive, affective, psychomotor, right? And uh, when it comes to that three cycle, uh, where is that? Yeah, how your thoughts are going to be processed, how you behave in a corporate sector with your patients or your nurses, how do you control your emotions? All these are very important when it comes to professional development, okay? That is that. Uh, next one is, I want to show you this video. Hold on. Staff or entry level staff. Tier two is for program management or super professionals. You will create and implement a professional development plan, and I'll give you some tips for increasing your leadership skills. So let's get started. These are the core competencies for public health professionals. These are established by the Public Health Foundation, and the link is at the bottom of the page. There's different kinds of skills, many of which you have learned in your um, master's program or in your graduate certificate, or even in your undergraduate public health program. Some of them you've learned on the job. All fantastic. Go to this, go to this uh, website and take a look at these core competencies. They are divided into three levels. So tier one is for frontline staff or entry level staff. Tier two is for program management or supervisor staff. And tier three is for senior and executive staff. Many of you uh, may be at the frontline staff or entry level, especially if you started this educational program with little work experience in the field of public health. For those of you who have had a moderate level of work experience in public health, you may be at tier two, and some of you could be at tier three. So figure out what tier you are, then go to the website and take a look at what the core competencies are at each level. So this is just an example for tier one communication um, in which the competencies are that you can identify literacy of different populations, you can communicate in writing orally, with both linguistic and cultural proficiency. You could solicit inputs from individuals, et cetera. Again, this is just a small part. Take a look at these and become familiar with these. You may also have other um, competencies that are part of your job description if you're working in the field or part of your educational program for competencies you are expected to learn. Pull those out too, and you'll need them in just a few minutes. So we may often think that success is a direct line. <laughs> it's just a straight path. But many times it's students a hold on of... hold on a second. Hold on. You're yes. moving around as you move between different positions, you get to know different people and learn from them, and you have different challenges in your life. So with that in mind, let's move forward to creating and implementing your what you need to understand in this uh, diagram is they all get what they mean like if you take success what people think is it looks like a very straight line that is you have a very straight road without any obstacles or challenges but the reality all of us including myself it was never a lenient path right it was always like a lot of challenges with your own self, with people, your family, a lot of external things, maybe health, maybe financial. We all have, when we reflect back in our life, success was never a linear path, right? We had many, many challenges. This is how it really looks. So why do they bring this professional development for public health professionals is if you ask a doctor or a nurse how their life as a medical student or how their life was in their career, they would always say that it was never a linear path. 
it had many challenges like they would have had issues with their own consultants with their own superiors right like some people did the stress of medicine they go through their own depression right so but it is always about um the the attitude how they they build right to go further because if their purpose is okay i want to be a good doctor to treat my patients to give them the best health care then they have found that sense of purpose and that is an important development in their career okay so different moving around as you move between different positions you get to know different people and learn from them and you have different challenges in your life so with that in mind let's move forward to creating and implementing your own professional development plan. So here are four steps toward creating and implementing your professional development plan. The first is self-assessment. So take a look at those public health core competencies and identify where you have strengths and where you have weaknesses or areas where you would like to grow. You can also take a look at any of those other um, items that I suggested you take a look at, your job description or your competencies for your particular graduate program. Any of those can be areas that you can use as a way to assess your strengths and weaknesses. You can always ask a colleague, a mentor, a professor for assistance and take a look at um, which areas you would like to grow in. Write these down. It's really important that you write them down. Try to pick several. Um, and make sure that you write them down or you can highlight it if you print it out or highlight it in your PDF. But make sure. Like I said, whatever that you need to do as per task or whatever the goals, you always write them down, okay? It's very clear to you. Your second step is to clarify your vision. So write down a broad vision statement that clarifies what you want to be a part of creating. So, for example, you may want to achieve equity in health services delivery or equity in addiction services delivery or equity in child mental health service delivery. You may want to eradicate anemia or depression or schizophrenia or addiction. You may want to ensure all children are vaccinated. Whatever it is, it's a broad statement of the way you want things to look like when what you want to be a part of creating. Write it down. So here, basically, if you are a doctor or a nurse and if they want to be specific in their job, if the doctor says, OK, my job role, my goal is to eradicate anemia means it's a disease that where people lose a lot of blood and they don't have a lot of iron and oxygen in their blood. So it's a very sad disease. So that is a goal of a doctor. Maybe he wants to eradicate anemia or he wants to achieve equity in health service delivery, like usually the Rich people get all the health facilities and poor people cannot. So a doctor can change the system. And the other thing is making to ensure that all children are vaccinated. Maybe it's a dengue vaccine that the doctor wants to make sure that all the children are vaccinated. So whatever it is, whether it is a self goal that you want to accomplish or it is a service that you want to give the society, whatever it is as a professional development, you have to write it down. OK. You take a little while to wordsmith it and get it just how you want, but get your vision statement to a point where it just makes you thrilled. That is what you want to get up in the morning to reach. Write it down. Next, state your mission within that vision. So this is within the vision that you just created. What is your part in achieving this vision? So this is the difference that you personally will make in the world as a result of who you are and what you do and what you bring to the table. So for example, if your vision was eradicate anemia, your mission could be something that's based on your work as a clinician. So ensuring that all children are tested at your clinic. Uh, it could be based on marketing or advertising. So taking a look at opportunities for advertising to promote iron rich foods. It could be related to research on implementation. There's so many different ways that you personally can contribute to achieving your mission. What is the way you want to contribute to achieving your mission? Write it down. Right, so I will quickly summarize this in case you all didn't understand. There is two things such as vision and mission. Vision is something that you have a dream of, right? What you want to do in five years time or 10 years time. Mission is in order to accomplish that 
dream or that goal of your five years or 10 years, what you do physically, what you do in terms in your action. So for example, like I said, uh, here they are saying, if a doctor has a vision to eradicate anemia, if the doctor has a vision to eradicate this blood-borne disease, that doctor's mission first is, he is going to test every, ch every child who is having anemia. Second one is, he can suggest the children who have anemia, okay, why don't you take food that has a lot of iron, like dates, like fish, like egg, you know, and then he could also do a research to bring awareness to the people. If you have these kind of symptoms, come to me, I will give you guidance, right? So that is the difference between a vision and a mission. Vision is your dream and goal. And the mission is what your action is going to be in order to accomplish that goal. Okay, so all of that is in professional development. And what they are saying here is if you have a vision or a mission, what you need to do end of the day is to write it down. Okay. Uh, okay, hold on. It opportunities for advertising to promote iron rich foods. It could be in your mission. What is the way you want to contribute to achieving your mission? Write it down. Next, you can create specific strategies. So you're going to use your self-assessment and what your goals are that you want to, where, what the areas are that you want to grow on. You'll take a look at your vision and your mission, and you will identify some strategic career goals. You want goals that are achievable and measurable with timelines. So you have to put a deadline on these for when you will get this accomplished. So for example, in the next year, I will take a course on something that's important to you, complete a literature synthesis or complete a research study or write something else, write a paper, write a letter to the editor, talk with three experts about this particular topic regarding career paths and opportunities, or shadow someone, have an informational interview, watch a certain program, do whatever it is that you get. There are lots of different things you can do if you're not sure. Talk to a trusted mentor or colleague or a faculty member about what the steps are. Bring your self-assessment and your vision and your mission and talk with that person about what the steps are to get you toward where you want to be. Of course, you're not going to eradicate schizophrenia overnight, but whatever your mission is as part of that big vision, you can take steps toward achieving that. And that's your own professional development right there. Write down at least three strategies, probably more, and then put target dates for completion. And if you have an, a big project um, or a big strategy like completing a literature synthesis, you may want to put multiple dates for completion that step one is by the end of this month, I will have identified my research questions and read up on how to conduct a literature synthesis. And then maybe by the end of next month, I will review this with a mentor and with a librarian and set up my search strategy and then okay so in summary what they are trying to say here is creating a specific strategy so like i said yesterday uh, sometimes deadlines are very good like if you want to be a good writer you don't give say five years maybe a maximum one year is enough so you first of all make a strategy okay first month it is all about my grammar second month it's all about collocation third month it is all about writing proper sentences so you have to give a deadline that only one month will be given for each particular task for you to accomplish that particular goal Right. So you then self assess yourself after a year. You could see, OK, now I write better English in better grammar, in better collocation, in better uh, sentences. Right. You can see the improvement. That is why you, you have to use a self assessment. So for vision and mission, you have to have a basically a strategy. And the first thing she said was to write down. And the second thing that you need to have is you have to have a timeline. To achieve this mission, you have to have a deadline. And while having a deadline and while having a vision and a mission, you need to also go through certain things. If you need to go for help, you can use a mentor for asking for guidance or you can use additional online resources, right? You can do so many things in order to accomplish that particular vision or a mission, okay? Uh, yes. 
at a professional development plan to get you going. And now I want to talk a little bit about increasing your leadership skills. So first, it's important to know what a leader is. A leader is simply a person who motivates people to work collaboratively to accomplish great things. I love that. You're motivating people to work together to accomplish great things. Fantastic. It's important to understand the difference between managers and leaders. Managers mobilize people and resources to get things done, which is fantastic. Leaders, however, set the purpose and the direction for how the team's going to move forward. Mm -hmm. And the leaders are also focusing not just on the short term of what needs to be done now, but for the long term of the unit or the organization and for achieving that long term mission and vision. So leadership, public health leadership is incredibly important. It's something we need a lot of. So here's some ways for you to start developing your critical skills for leadership. And each of these you can work on whether you are officially in a leadership position or not, and whether you have that official leadership title or not. All of these are things that will help you in leadership. So okay, so this one, like I already told you this also before, in a professional development, you need to be a leader more than a manager, right? Because a leader is the one who sets the direction. He finds out people in difficult situation, how he's going to help the people in difficult situation, how he's fair to everybody who is working in that organization. But a manager is basically sometimes a leader appoints a manager and he just wants the work to get done. So instead, sometimes a manager, they usually take that word, I'm the manager. And instead of doing it, they can get it done through other people. But there are some good managers who don't like overuse or take advantage of the employee, but he also contributes in a certain way. But there are certain managers who don't do anything, but instead make other people to do it for him. So he has that authority to use that term manager, but a leader is different. He finds the purpose, the direction for the short and long term. You know, he uh, finds uh, what you call solutions in difficult situations, uh, stuff like that. OK. Uh, and yeah, so this is the five critical skills for leadership. Uh, skills, how you set the goals, how you run a meeting, how you find mentors, how you build a team and how you negotiate a conflict. Like always conflict can happen. So if a leader or a manager is trying to have a meeting, there will be five people who agrees with the idea and other five people disagrees with the idea. So as a leader, he needs to understand, OK, diplomatically, how he can find a solution that everybody will be on the same page. OK that everybody is not uh, going to have any uh, conflict because end of the day, like I said, it's all about how you, uh, what you call, develop professionally, right? That is the most important thing. Uh, next one, regardless of your goal, okay, I'll just go through this. You need to have efficiency, staff relationship, customer service, because you have to have, like I said, Colleague may not be your friend, but it is essential that you form a proper, a professional bond so that when you have to work as a team that you can collaboratively work, right? And only then there could be uh, efficiency, there could be sort of, you know, productivity, right? All those things will come when it comes when you are setting a goal, right? Uh, do you all understand from up to here to up to now that what we discuss, it's all about what we already discussed in the past three weeks is just a summary that I'm trying to give you all. We already told about strategies, writing them down, who is a leader, who is a manager, right? What are the skills you need in terms of uh, emotional, physical, and also motor, right? Any questions, students? Because we are almost uh, towards the end of the session, and I will continue this uh, from next week onwards because I have to go for my prayers as well. So do you all have any questions? And we are almost done with the session. Do you all have any questions? We only had few students today, so they can watch the recording. But Taranga and Tilani, do you all have any questions? No, me. Okay. So um, 
I will uh, stop the session. I hope you all will submit your assignments by 11th of October. If you all have any uh, issues or doubts, you all can always WhatsApp to me and well done for the students who have already submitted. Uh, I will see you all again next Saturday and we will continue from this video and also from the slides that we stopped today. Okay, students, if there is no question, I will uh, sign off now. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Okay, you're welcome. Good night. Good night.